I mean, I always love to speak about uh, anything at three different levels. You know, whenever we use such words as peace or tranquility or success, there is a worldly success, there is a mental and a subtle success, and then there is a very deeper spiritual success. You know, if I can use the word success, to know oneself spiritually means to know oneself deeply because we are all spiritual. There isn't anyone who is not spiritual. When people are at a very senior level, their CEOs or CFOs, and these ability. of forecasting or having such deep insights into the future are not normal human abilities they are abilities of a yogi or the abilities of a person who is on very strong tapasya this is a story of several lifetimes and when you see somebody non spiritual and successful that means that they have abilities inside them and they have carry forward uh, karma points that make them successful and they are not consciously into any spiritual awareness in this life there are there are many people like that Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Light Positive Show. I hope you are taking good care of yourself and being positive. Our guest for tonight is somebody very special. She is Ma Gyan Subida. Ma Gyan is a mystic Himalayan master, a healer, a gifted yogini, a Vedic astrologer, a psychic reader, and a spiritual and a specialist in life force energy. She is the founder of C Plus Meditation Technique and the Cosmic Intelligence Evolutionary Path. She lives in Kirti Hermitage on the banks of the Holy Ganga. People from all parts of the world come to learn different forms of healing, divination, and a string of Indian, Western, and Zen practices. She will be holding a two-day workshop on tarot reading on the twenty-third and twenty-fourth April at Sri Aurobindo Ashram, Dhankar. So please uh, do book your seats. Welcome, Margya. Welcome to another Life Positive Show. It's a pleasure to have you tonight. The topic for today's discussion is: Can spirituality make us successful? So, uh, beginning today's session. Thank you so much, Shivi. Thank you so much, and a big warm welcome to uh, your uh, Life Positive group. I've been associated with this group for a long time, and it feels at home when I'm with uh, anyone from Life Positive. and a warm welcome to everyone else who is here uh, it's it's a absolute sure joy to be speaking on this subject um i would i'll be very happy if there's a open forum or a open question answer session however i, I think you have your questions ready so uh ma let me ask you uh, ask you the first question what Ji. according to you is success and when you talk about uh taking the help of spirituality to be successful i think it's also equally important to define what success means yes sure so uh, in in the normal parlance in in any worldly sense success would mean you are attained or accomplished on something that you envision for your life you know when you have a vision for a good life and you have attained or achieved that then a man is uh, a man or a woman is called successful so uh, the 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 deeper sense of success can mean a lot i mean i always love to speak about uh, anything at three different levels you know whenever we use such words as uh, peace or tranquility or success for instance i would define success at three different levels there is a worldly success there is a mental and a subtle success and then there is a very deeper spiritual success you know if i can use the word success so um for people who are uh, living a worldly life and uh, are uh, enterprising and want to make it big in life for them success would mean attaining a certain goal uh, uh, whatever they envision in terms of uh, financial success or uh, uh, quality of life or uh, status in life you know or something in their family then they would call themselves successful at a deeper level however accomplishment uh, is something which is a far more um, you know all encompassing kind of a word that can define success you accomplish accomplish at all levels of living you know when you have attained uh, supremacy or completion at at all levels in your life then one would uh, you know rightly say that he or she is successful so it's very important for uh, us to understand that uh, uh, when when we say something about success there is a vision attached to this success and how deep how good 
and how broad and how um, uh, what quality this vision is about. So for people who have a, a, a very tangible goal and a very worldly goal, a very materialistic goal for them, success would mean when they achieve that goal. And for people who have a very holistic view of life, uh, when they achieve from all the parameters of life, when they attain to all the parameters of their life, then they would call themselves successful. Yeah. Uh, the second question would be that we all yearn for success. Now, whether it's uh, oh, it's a, it's yeah, about yeah. a goal which you have uh, decided for yourself, or it's about uh, attaining a completion in all uh, aspects or levels of life, but still we also see that not many are successful. Many, not many people are able to achieve success in life. So what distinguishes a successful person from an unsuccessful one? Why is it that somebody will become successful, another, despite trying very hard, will be finding it very difficult to even make ends meet? Yeah, so uh, uh, first part of the question that what distinguishes a successful person from unsuccessful person, primarily the level of their uh, happiness, joy, contentment, and uh, the exuberance that they exude, you know, uh, that would, whether he's, he's living a satisfied life and there is joy in his every transaction would, would mean a person is successful because you are happy and joyous only when you have attained what you want to, uh, you know, attain. And uh, dissatisfaction and uh, discontentment and uh, 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 always cribbing kind of attitude would obviously make the, uh, the person prominently seem like unsuccessful you know these are so so your your quality of life in itself distinguishes whether a person is successful or not successful quality of life as in not um, the material quality of life but the uh, the quality of feelings emotions joy happiness exuberance color and uh, living life fully would determine how successful you are uh, or, or a person is yeah and uh, um, secondly, what, why, why is it so that uh, some, some people are successful easily and some people try as much hard they, uh, they may, they are not successful. So uh, that, that depends on what kind of an attainment they are seeking. You see, when you have a vision and a goal in life and uh, uh, this vision and a goal would require certain steps, certain parameters you know, for success. And if the person has not worked towards all these parameters, then obviously he is unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. So when a person is repeatedly unsuccessful at uh, whatever he's undertaking, then he needs exploration and in introspection and reflection within to understand um, why is he unsuccessful? There are many dimensions of this introspection. And that's why I insist that spirituality is a very important aspect to know oneself spiritually means to know oneself deeply because we are all spiritual. There isn't anyone who is not spiritual. We are guided and ruled and governed by the spirit, you know, so we are all spiritual, but some recognize their spirituality and some do not recognize their spirituality. If you recognize the spirituality, then you can work in, in, in tandem with it. And if one does not recognize spirituality, then his working is only very external um, he, he neglects the inner parts and the inner layers of his being. He's only participating in one part of his being, which is the external. That is why the success can never be complete if it, one is not in integrity with all aspects of the personality. This is what I sincerely feel. Yeah. Is it possible for an unsuccessful person to take recourse to spirituality, uh, go on a self inventory and then find out what all has been lacking in his endeavors or efforts with, because of which success has been el eluding him. And then uh, perhaps he can embark on that path to success because now he has spiritual help and certain insights which he did not have earlier. Yeah, definitely. There, there's so many aspects of his being. Uh, he, he is a complete human being at a, at a physical gross level, at a subtler emotional, intellectual level, and at a deeper causal karmic level, um, mm -hmm. where he is chained into several life stories, you know, in him. So often, uh, you know, failure often becomes one of the reasons for a person's spiritual development. Uh, often it is seen in the world that when a man is repeatedly failing, then he is, uh, you know, diving deep within to understand why is he failing, despite
despite all the efforts that he is putting in in the external and that often takes him on an inward spiritual journey to understand himself more holistically and also understand all the parameters of success success is not just what you may do outside but there's a lot that has to uh, that has to happen within for a person to be successful so his investigation begins and therefore many times you see a lot of st spiritual stories uh, uh, have begun and started, uh, you know, the spiritual paths have started for people who have gone through extreme failure. Yeah. Magan, we still we see that there's so many people around us who are tremendously successful, and yet we don't see them following the path of spirituality or even ever doing, ever having done any such practice, and yet they are like uh, blossoming and flourishing everywhere, and whichever project they take up, it's like turns into a kind of a whole mind. So then, Ma, uh, do you think that if not in this life, in some life, they have done some sadhana, or there is an element of awareness in them about the self which is absent in others, which is either by default they are blessed or uh, because they have been uh, into some, some or the other spiritual practice in some life because we don't see any evidence of they following a spiritual practice in this life. And yet they are tremendously successful. Yes, this is this is true. It's, it's very true. I was addressing a, a group of senior management people once at a company and um, I was trying to uh, promote and, uh, you know, incorporate uh, a spiritual teaching in their training program, which was I was giving a presentation and they were all senior management people. And one of them said, but ma'am, all this is very spiritual. You know, he said to me, all this is very spiritual and I, we are all very practical worldly people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't understand, I don't see how this could help us in our training programs. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was giving this answer, what probably would even answer your question, that uh, uh, when people are at a very senior level, their CEOs or CFOs and leading organizations, leaders, you know, they have a high level of intelligence and uh, high level of insight, foresight. They are uh, building strategies for the company's growth. They, they determine the, the future of the market, they envision uh, and forecast the market trends, et cetera, financial projections, et cetera. These abilities of forecasting or having such deep insights into the future are not normal human abilities. They are abilities of a yogi or the abilities of a person who is on a uh, very strong tapascharya, you know. And so in, in previous lifetimes, when they have gone through intense tapas, and uh, at some point, let's say there is a yogi who has gone through a lot of fire of penance and has reached certain level of attainment and has a blossomed intellect. Um, on his deathbed, he has a, this deep desire that, oh, he spent all his life in, in sadhana and he has not tasted any of the flavors of the world and would love to have financial riches and uh, love to you know, uh, rule the world or see all the colors of the world. This desire could fructify and can take a life of a, a very non-spiritual ordinary person in an ordinary home. However, the intellect being blossomed, he progresses into taking a leadership position in, in, you know, in a big company. And there the abilities of the yogi would definitely awaken because they're there in every cell of the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is unaware of these yogic abilities and he is utilizing all these uh, abilities to, to, to lead the life that he wants to, he wanted to lead. It was a deep desire that he wanted uh, to be fulfilled. And so one lifetime goes into the worldly attainment and the next lifetime he would proceed again to his spiritual attainment. You know, this is how life after life, uh, many lives, we spend many lives. Let's say we spend about 108 human lives, you know, of different quality before we uh, take a 360 degree and come back into the point where we began and come into a total state of surrender. So uh, yes, this is a story of several lifetimes. And when you see somebody non-spiritual and successful in the world, that means that they have abilities inside them and they have uh, uh, carry forward of blessings, punya, what we say, you know, uh, carry forward uh, karma points that make them successful. And they are not consciously into any spiritual awareness in this life. There are, there are many people like that, yes. Coming back to my earlier question that I want to know that, for example, I'm somebody who wants to taste material success. I am into spirituality yet. I'm not uh, really waiting for my uh, 
time of my passing away to, for me to realize that I have not tasted the joys of the world. I, I am a spiritual person, yet I want to be materially successful also. So then in such a case, can my spiritual knowledge help me actually navigate this uh, challenging world of uh, you know, attaining material uh, success? Of course, of course, of course. And that's one of the most beautiful combinations. You know, you have uh, the extreme points of sattva and the extreme points of tamas. The extreme points of sattva makes one surrender and renounce everything and then go into the light. And then there is the extreme point of the tamas where a person is completely in darkness. And then there is a middle level of the rajas, which is all the grandeur and the colors of this life and the world. And um, for a normal person who is not yet ready to renounce or go into um, a complete, uh, uh, you know, withdrawal from the world, for him to be in rajas, that means to be in the color and take his steps slowly towards the sattva, you know, would be an ideal kind of a life where he is uh, taking uh, steps towards purity uh, at, at one level and steps towards success uh, and, uh, you know, attainment, achievement of what he, what he defines as his state of abundance, you know, side by side, parallelly. And uh, this is what is advised to all the youngsters that they come into a middle level where they are doing away with all the tamasic carry forwards of the previous birth and the remnants and whatever, uh, you know, dark remains in the filters of our senses that needs to be eradicated. One should consciously be working towards eradication of this tamas and taking conscious steps into rajas with sattva being at the at the at the other end where he's walking you know so slowly he would uh, he will be able to to see all the colors of life be successful from the worldly point of view have a family earn money have abundance and yet cultivate deep virtues and values inside you know which prepare him for for a vanaprastha stage where uh, having completed uh, a beautiful grass ashram and a very successful uh, worldly life, you take one step consciously, uh, you know, towards withdrawal. Vanaprastha is like withdrawal from the world slowly, happily, with contentment, with deep satisfaction, having done it all, having seen it all. Then you consciously move into withdrawal. And then in, in this one lifetime itself, one can proceed towards, uh, you know, a very contented sannyasa life that can be possible having having achieved heights of success and we see we see a lot of people there are a lot of living examples we have people who have been industrially very successful we have industrialists we have uh, corporate giants who are very successful and uh, yet are very conscious about their uh, responsibilities duties towards the world towards the society and are doing good projects and good uh, humanitarian work you know, to, to, to be able to utilize this abundance for the, for the upliftment of the society. And they, at a personal level, many of these are taking steps into one press and towards sannyas. Many of them are, you know, so that's a very beautiful life to live, Shivi. Yes. So, Margin, I have another question for the younger, the younger generation. They are all thirsting for success. And that's also a very tumultuous time in an individual's life when you're just trying to step out of that... Uh, uh, you know that that part of your life which where you were adolescent and you're still in the stage of growing and then you are now into the world and you want to prove yourself and there are so many uh theories which are spread uh, around spread around which are talk of success and yet they feel that often success is beyond well always a slightly beyond their caste so in order to be able to center themselves and uh, actually attain their uh, desire of becoming successful how can spirituality help yeah, the, uh, you know, spirituality is, is an ocean. I mean, when you talk about spiritual wisdom, knowledge, ways and means, theories, philosophies, and uh, so many concepts, it's a huge ocean. So pinpointedly, how, how does one, if one wants to utilize spirituality for success, how does one go ahead? See, when you look from, even from the worldly point of view, we have something called Ashtang Yoga. You know, Ashtang Yoga talks about the eight limbs of yoga. And yoga here, in, in specifically with the yogis, means the union of the 
of the mind, body, spirit, and the union, you know, experiencing oneness and the meeting of the real and the unreal together. So here we can utilize the steps of the Ashtanga for any kind of a successful life to be, to be very practical. So for instance, yam, niyam, asan, pranayam, pratyahar, dharana, dhyan, samadhi. These are your eight uh, anga, eight limbs. For any project, I mean, I'm talking right from a very mundane level, from a very gross level, to let us talk about the success to at a very deeper level. Even for a project to be successful, if somebody is in a startup, if somebody is in a startup or has, has put in a project or has launched a new product or has, you know, done, taken a step towards a, a particular field that he wishes to be successful into, you know, all these eight limbs will apply. Yam niyam. Yam niyam basically, yamas talk about, um, uh, you know, uh, great vows and great principle living. You know, in, in the yoga, the, uh, the five yamas talk about, uh, 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 you know, you, you lead a very ahinsa, satya, ashteya, brahmacharya, aparigraha. You know, it talks about these. They're very deeper spiritual meanings of all these things. But at a very mundane level, Yama and Niyama are basically rules and uh, certain principles that you live your life on. All right. So even for a very ordinary person who is in a, in a, at the beginning, at the onset of a business that he wants to make successful, he wants his life to become successful. Yama and Niyama are applicable to him as well. Unless a person leads a valued life, you know, a life which is based on a value system, unless he has certain principles you know, to follow on some ideals that he follows, some system and a discipline that he gets into. This is at the onset, this is the first thing that a person has to do is to discipline himself and put on a certain value system, follow a certain value system, which is suitable for that kind of work that he is, you know, starting for a startup. Then Yam Niyam, then Asana. Asana talks about a physical regime basically a, phys a phys physical uh, discipline. Um, so here in the yoga, we, we talk about the, uh, the asana practice, but for a startup, uh, uh, asana practice would mean that there is a certain discipline and a way of life and a dincharya that he should be having, mm -hmm. a dincharya that he should be having to be successful in that field, which means the practices that are essential for the learning, which is essential for his project to be successful should be ongoing. He should keep his learning going. He should keep his practices going and he should keep his research going more and more, right? Asana could mean then the pranayam is breath work. Where is he spending his energy? You know, that means uh, he has to monitor what are the things that he does through the day that he's spending energy with. You know, so spending of the energy has to go very intelligently. You, one cannot become successful if one has got scattered energy uh, expenditure. You know, if he's spending his energy and in a scattered way. Okay. He has to be very careful and with great planning where he wants to spend his energy. Pranayama could, could give you that kind of a discipline, okay? Yeah, but life has to be very, very regimented, very disciplined, the mind yes. has to be very sharply focused. Yes. In order for anybody to be this, uh, to attain, any successful and spirituality can give you that clarity, that insight and also that vigor and discipline through which you can attain your goal. Absolutely, absolutely. All of, the, all of these first steps what I spoke about can be taken deeper you know, through spiritual awakening and a person can, you know, uh, make absolute pinpointed progress towards the success that he seeks. I, so, I have a feeling, yes, sir, now young, that uh, ancient India was considered to be the golden bird. And that time you were very rooted into who we actually are, our spiritual self, and all the best of the Shastras were written, the rest of the Krita yes, were written, yes, best yes. of the... I think discoveries and inventions were made at that time and the our age, the old temples uh, which are found in South India, I mean, they're not even relics, they're still standing strong. They bear testimony to this fact that uh, uh, we were very advanced at, at that time simply because we were very rooted deeply into our spirituality and spiritual Absolutely. As we lost that touch with our authentic self, we also began to lose touch with success. Yes. And now, because... Uh, and uh, unfortunately, spirituality has been uh, has come to be defined with uh, uh, people who are uh, you know, renunciates or who have kind of left everything and totally immersed in uh, looking for God. Whereas earlier we had a very lovely balance of things of material as well as spiritual because of which we saw 
and all round abundance in our lives. Yes. And perhaps this could be missing. And uh, that's what is very important for us to be connected to our authentic, real authentic spiritual self, for which our land was, has always been known. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the, the all the eight limbs of yoga were for an ordinary man. They were not for enunciates at all. They were for ordinary people to take at their level, to take at their level. We're practicing yam, nima, yam, yamas and niyamas. You can practice at your level. You can do a little bit of pranayama, a little bit of meditation, you know, to keep keep yourself centered and to keep yourself rooted within, within uh, you know, your own strength. So externalizing uh, and searching for formulas for success outside is is a uh, is a very is a very short sighted uh, you know um, approach. Whereas uh, uh, dwelling deep inside and uh, uh, you know prompting your inside to come out with ways and means and also building your inner strength through the spiritual practices. You know they say tapa swadhyaya ishwar pranidhanani. Uh, uh, it's called the, the the formula for the Kriya Yoga. So Tapaha, Swadhyay and Ishwar Pranidhanani, these three things have been a part, integral part of Indian culture from the beginning. So some form of a tapascharya. Tapascharya need not definite, does not definitely mean uh, japa, mantra japa, or uh, you know, uh, it, it does not pinpointedly indicate towards even meditation only. It, it means to invoke the fire within. Tapasya basically means invoke the fire within. For a dancer or for a singer, tapasya could mean riyas. You know, it, it could mean riyas. For a painter, it could mean long hours of contemplation on his uh, uh, ideas and his creativity. You know, for a sportsman, tapasya can be the, the practice hours that he's giving into his sport. You know, so which means dedicated. Tapasya is complete dedication, you know. And then swadhyay is deep study. You cannot be successful in any field unless you study deeply, you know, everything about that particular uh, subject that you want to pursue and want to be successful in. Or even overall, overall success in life. You know, even when you use success as a word encompassing many aspects of your life, even then, you know, the more you study life and the more you understand the deeper layers of uh, what appears to be very glossy. You need to understand the deeper layers to, to choose wisely what you would want in your definition of success and what is your vision of a successful life. It, it can become more and more clearer even you understand and study. And Ishwar Pranidhanani is something which is grossly or very largely missing in the society today. Ishwar Pranidhanani is a faith and surrender towards the divine and the cosmos for that matter. You know, so when, when, when we take our projects to, uh, to stiffen our ego, you know, when projects and when any endeavor is taken to stiffen our ego, then it becomes a very difficult thing to handle for ourselves. Whereas when you take up all the necessary steps which are required for the success, you know, and then surrender it to the Lord or surrender it to the universal existence, you know, you are lighter and you are able to take the next step, which is, which is, you know, awaiting, you know, because there is always an ongoing path. The path is going on. A person who is stifled with, with what all he has done and there is so much of sticking to the ego, is he's tired already. You know, he's already tired carrying the burden and the load of the pressure of the success. So Ishwar Pranidhanani is, is an attitude of surrender on day-to-day -day basis with all the hard work that you do. At the end of the day, you learn to surrender it to the divine. And that ensures that you have space enough and rest enough to take the next step that is required for your successful life. Yeah. <laughs> Another important question which is coming to my mind is that um, uh, you know success uh, is mostly desired by those who don't have it, okay? Because it's like that proverbial, uh, say, you know, uh, fruit which will eventually quench their uh, thirst of recognition or uh, uh, forever. Whereas uh, people who are actually hugely successful, they do really don't look up to success as others do. And we've also seen that many of them will later on turn back and tell the world that, uh, you know, it's not important. Material success is not as important as building your relationships or spending time with your family or traveling the world or, uh, or pausing and so kind of smelling the coffee. So now this like creates a little bit of confusion in people's mind that what do you mean to see, uh, say that 
For example, you know, an ordinary person may be having all of these things and still that yearning would be there in him that I really couldn't get that goal which I wanted. And here the usually successful person is saying, no, what I have is, uh, is not important uh, as compared to what you have. So why do you think that, you know, at a later stage in life, they have this realization that all this search or this drive was for nothing and uh, it is not as desirable as people think it to be. Yeah. This is, they grow up. This is called a, this is called a collective, um, uh, you know, a, a collective collective psychology or a collective kind of an oasis created in the mind, a, a imaginary kind of a uh, picture created of a successful life. And uh, there are many reasons for why this happens. And the youngsters, especially as they grow, they are absorbing, their senses are absorbing everything. And uh, they, they, they define what, what is success according to a collective picture that they gather. You know, they take a collective picture of what they gather about what successful people are doing in the world. You know, they, they look at ads, they look at movies, they look at, you know, there is media in, in print and in the, in the cinema and everywhere. And also stories that they often hear about how enjoyable life is for people who are successful there. Um, much of this is, is created. You know, my, many of these stories are created. It's a hyperbole. You know, so uh, uh, as one, when, when one is young, then, uh, you know, there's this so-called created story of a success is there, a goal for success is there, in, in painted with all the colors that you are absorbing through your growing stages. And somewhere in the middle level, you realize that all of this is not really so true. And when you, when you go to the other end of it, you realize that success is if if i was able to spend my day with happiness then maybe that day was successful you know so it's not a quantifying kind of a thing you can't you can't measure what success is there isn't any uh, there there aren't any dimensions to a successful life successful life is a realization basically it's a realization and uh, could be a very personal personalized or a customized uh, proportion of contentment love joy money you know, uh, uh, a figure that one is very customized. So what, what I feel is successful may not be true to, to another person. You know, that may not be true to another person. So it depends on the, on the kind of a personality uh, we have, the vasanas that we are carrying from our previous birth, the desires, you know, the gunas and uh, the doshas, you know, Ayurveda and uh, Indian uh, the philosophy, both of them talk about the intricate prakriti which we are born with, you know? So depending on this prakriti, we have hunger and desires, you know? Some people have great desires and some people have very little desire. Depending on that, the definition of success would be different. So each one is responsible for researching and finding out what is your level uh, of what you call success. You know, and, and one must, according to Prakriti, define this, not according to what somebody else is defining. It's like, uh, it's like when you come, come in recognition with your true nature, then you can, you can put a measure to what is successful for you. You know, a frog should always try to be a frog and not, not try to be a snake. You know, and, and similarly, a snake need not ever try to be a frog, however successful the frog is. You know, so it's it's like one has to come in terms with his own nature and define and customize his uh, definition of success. Yeah. Since we are living in society, so we still uh, get influenced by thoughts and the parameters yeah. which are which are circulating all around. There could be many women who are very content with being uh, with, their, with being at home and looking after their husband and children. Absolutely. Remember. Yeah. And they are pretty satisfied with it, but yet the pressures of society will come into play and they will be made to feel unworthy and unless and until they uh, show their value in terms of money, which is a little unfortunate. So uh, uh, how do you think the uh, uh, spirituality can help us really center ourselves and know our true God? Because what I feel is that even for a housewife, you know, if she's kind of uh, discontented with her life, and it's not because of herself, it's because of uh, the pressure which is around her. So how can spirituality uh, help her uh, you know, uh, believe in herself and, where, and in her and in her station in life? Simply because I feel that when you take a kind of step into spirituality, you actually flower. Yes. You never remain who you were to begin with. And this can also happen to anybody. Uh, 
irrespective of uh, what her, his or her station in life is. And then, uh, uh, no, do you feel that you know, spirituality will not uh, kind of make you stay where you are, but always take you several steps ahead? So your entire idea and picture of life may go a pa undergo a paradigm shift just because yes. you have taken this path. And mm. it can also be very tumultuous uh, because uh, so many of your belief systems will shatter, your uh, relationships will also uh, feel the stress because of your awakening. So how can, you know, spirituality is also helping you to kind of find yourself and also uh, giving you these troubles uh, because of which your uh, old paradigms are now falling apart. So can spirituality also help a person navigate this challenge in time? Yeah, basically when, when, uh, when we say somebody is practicing spirituality, which means there are some primary practices that he or she is doing. Um, one being studying about the self, you know, knowing more and more about uh, herself or himself. So uh, all these workshops that are happening and all these books which are there, they help one to recognize, uh, you know, yourself from a spiritual depth. And uh, secondly, committed practices like meditation or uh, any, any form of healing, any kind of a regulated discipline that is done every day helps a person to expand his inner awareness, you know, and you know, the, the doors of inner understanding open and the person comes more and more closer to her true self. And all the conditioning, which is, which is, which is like false layers, which are there, which are grown on the person, they fall apart you know, false layers fall apart and the truth of his personality blossoms, you know, he blossoms as, as truly he or she is. And so uh, spirituality, A, on the onset will help the person understand his true self, which means that all that was false will drop little by little, you know, so there are jitters many times people go through jittery uh, situations where all that is false is dropping and all that was not true does no longer stays uh, together or all that is not desirable, you know, kind of detaches from the person. So finding a, a finding the, the true self in itself is one of the uh, ingredients for the man's life or a woman's life to be successful. And he, he opens into a new found uh, state of awareness. He opens himself to a new understanding of himself, which is a very, very, uh, it's, it's a very beautiful experience because for the first time, uh, he or she realizes how much in truth and how much in integrity she's finding her life. From here, she starts, uh, you know, uh, uh, anchoring into deep strength. You know, the soul is sitting deep inside of us and uh, the soul is, is, is but a part of the universal self, you know, and the, and the expansiveness of the universal self is boundless. You know, it's boundless. So when, you, when a person comes in touch with the, with the soul and with the true self inside, then he is in touch with the boundless self you know, of the universe, which means that there is fathomless and uh, limitless possibilities of expansion that one realizes and, and senses deep inside. So there is a new, new way of looking at, at life completely. And therefore, this would make the person very deep, very quieter, much quieter than before, also very compassionate, to hold on to everything that is affected because of his awakening. You know, he holds on to everything with compassion, uh, whatever has been affected due to his spirituality. And of course, would become instrumental in, in creating success for everyone around him, not only for himself, but for everyone around him. Spirituality definitely helps the person to contact into the fathomless and the limitless possibility of energy. The source of energy is inside, you know, he gets into touch with the source of energy. So there is no limit to how much growth can, uh, how much growth he can aspire or he can aim at. There's no limit. Absolutely. Well, can you share, share an example of somebody who has actually flowered and become a successful person simply because he took the path of spirituality to uh, discover himself and let go of all the addictions or bad habits he might have been having uh, just to oh innumerable examples innumerable i mean there are so many of them from ordinary 
you know, from ordinary house, uh, housewives, I won't use the word ordinary housewives are great people, uh, a ordinary person, I would say, who, who is not yet recognized his true self, uh, from that level to rising up to becoming entrepreneurs. And we have so many success stories everywhere. Sometimes they are uh, spiritually connected, sometimes not. Like you said, there can be someone who is successful, but not spiritually practicing in this life. That's possible. But yes, spiritual practitioners, you know, coming from absolute uh, 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 nothingness to so much of fullness of life. There are innumerable life positive. I've read so many stories for so many years of people who have blossomed from ordinariness and uh, come up with such beautiful life. Every Life Positive magazine has a success story. And I've been reading it for so many years now. Recently, I am not getting a copy of Life Positive because my address has changed. But otherwise, for so many years, it carries such beautiful stories, you know, of people who have blossomed and uh, come out. You know, the, the lotus, like we say, the lotus rises up from the muck and comes, into, comes out into a beautiful flower is the story of all these human beings who have risen from absolute ordinariness and nothingness and uh, uh, touched the heights of extraordinariness. You know, many stories. I mean, every master, you, you, or even living masters that you have in India and even outside, you touch into anybody's story and you will find extraordinary events and extraordinary dimensions to how he's risen to where he is. Everyone has an extraordinary story. You know, I was reading about a master the other day. He's walked all over from different countries and reached India. Uh, it's amazing and has found his his, his God and his uh, self, you know, quite stationed at home here in India. So there are so many stories of Westerners, of Indians. Uh, it, it's very difficult to pinpointedly give you one story. <laughs> it's so many of them. <laughs> you know, but you've coached and trained so many people, Ma. I mean, you have so many followers and so many disciples from all over the world. And you must, and many must have come to you in a very uh, broken state. Yes. <laughs> And then, then can you share an example from those uh, experiences where somebody approached you, took your help, uh, grew into spirituality, and then was able also able to become successful in the world, uh, in the world also. Yeah, well, guides and mentors are there as uh, as agents of God. I feel that they're agents of God. It's basically the person's own story, which is meant to uh, transform and meant to take him to the height that he has reached. Uh, people with addictions and people with ordinary uh, lives, you know, living lives of, uh, uh, you know, uh, absolute ordinariness. I can tell you my own story in a very, you know, in a very small paragraph that could be the best uh, example. <laughs> yes, that would be the best example. I grew up as a child with a very poor esteem. And the, the, the best that I could think for myself was that I could maybe work as a very good clerk somewhere or a nanny or look after babies very well because I love babies. My esteem was so poor that I would think that I could clean the house very well. So maybe I could be a caretaker or maybe I could uh, you know, uh, teach some small little things to children in the nursery, so, something like that. The esteem was very low. And from that point, when I found my, um, my bearings and when I got connected to my real self, which was at the age of about 14, you know, I was I studied in the Mother's International School and I was connected with Sri Aurobindo and uh, Mother from the school time. I started meditating. And uh, with that, that, that thread of meditation that I, that I caught by, at the age of 14 to this, to this age that I'm nearing 60, you know, I can tell you that every level, every year has been another level of growth. You know, every, every year has been another level of growth in finding myself and getting closer and closer to God. So from right from, uh, you know, habits uh, to discipline to clumsiness, I was very clumsy when I was a child, very clumsy. You know, my things would be in disorderly manner and everything. It was a reflection of my mind, which was rebelling all the time. The untidiness of the thoughts inside reflected in the untidiness outside. You know, I was messed up. My drawers were messed up. Nothing was in orderly way. From that level to perfect orderliness and divineness, you know, divinity reflects in everything that I do today. You know, this is a journey of these, say, 40, 50 years. 
is in itself a testimony to how spirituality can help you become successful in a, in a good human being, to become a good human being, in a blossom to human life. You know, and innumerable stories. I have worked with thousands of people till date. More than four decades of my work in the spiritual field has given me amazing insight about how human life can be uplifted and taken to the, to the level of divinity. You know, that capacity is there in the spiritual practices. And therefore, it's very important for people, whatever kind of success stories you want to build for yourself, it's very important for you to be, you know, station hinged within. My Gurudev says that, you know, there's a wheel. You imagine a wheel, you know, a wheel that is moving the cart. Okay, imagine this wheel. And there are spokes in this wheel. There are spokes in this wheel. And then there is in the center, there is a nut. There's an axle point, right? So he says that the card is moving. Suppose you're a person on the wheel. And if you're on one of these spokes, the wheel is going round and you go round every time the wheel goes round because you're stationed on a spoke. So that means if you're having your externalized living, if you're thinking all the time outside, then your head goes round and round. The, it's too much of hard work in the world. But if you're stationed inside the wheel at the axle where the nut, there's a small nut that moves the wheel. You know, there's very little movement there. There's very little movement there. If you station yourself to the center, there's hardly anything that you will do and yet life will move on. Yet life will move on. The wheel will move, the cart will move, the ground is, is moving, everything is moving. So, you know, the process of happening is realized when one is centered. Even when, when one is centered and spirituality helps you to be centered and centered and deeply hinged and anchored into the power of yourself. You know, when one is stationed there, you will see all things unfolding and happening. You know, there's very little doing. You will do things mechanically, automatically. It's not that a person becomes very lazy when he is spiritual. No, and things are going to be abracadabra happening. No, you do. But your participation is not burdensome. It's not tiring. It just happens. You understand that it's happening. You know, for instance, I go to sleep at eight o'clock. I told you, Shivi. I go to sleep. My lights go off at eight o'clock. I never give a talk at seven o'clock to eight o'clock. But it happened this way and I'm here I am, I'm talking to you. So it's happening. It's not something that I, if I think I have to do, I said, no, Shibi, I'm going to go to sleep. I'll be asleep. I can't talk at eight o'clock, but it's happening. You know, so hinged inside, when a person is hinged inside, you know, he has got the sutra for success. He can utilize this sutra for success in whatever area he wants, in whichever area, whichever field he wants. He can harness the power inside, you know, he can harness the power from inside. And that's why spiritual practices are amazing for any, any kind of a success, be it worldly success or other worldly success, you know. But most Indian parents are very averse to the idea of their child taking the spiritual path simply because they feel that uh, uh, he will be diverted and he will become a monk and he will really not put his heart and soul into things which matter to them, like uh, becoming materially successful, uh, getting a high post or a big package or raising a family. So then uh, what do you have to say about this fear? And does spirituality really does these, these kind of things to people who are trying to use spiritual concepts and principles to become uh, successful in life in material terms? Uh, no person can become a, a, a recluse or a, a, you know, a, a renunciate or a sannyasi or a sadhu just like that. It, he, he, he has to have it in his destiny to become that. You cannot, one cannot become. There are desires. The desires uh, need to be fulfilled. And an ordinary man, an ordinary person who is not destined to be a sannyasi will not be a sannyasi, even if he reads 10 books or attends 10 workshops or does anything. He won't, you know. And if he is destined to be a sannyasi, nothing can stop him from being a sannyasi. He will, you know. So there is some, something called a destined uh, uh, path ahead that, Everyone must believe in parents, especially when they're, uh, you know, thinking for their children. Harnessing power inside is science. It's not uh, uh, so much of a religious or a spiritual kind of, a, um, uh, you know, trap. It's not a trap. It's science to harness power inside and to know about the spirit and to know how to regulate your breath or to harness the energy or to enhance your prana or to maximize your functioning of the gross body and the subtle body is science. It is not a spiritual trap to begin with. 
Secondly, you know, when 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 children are taught these things, you know, at uh, at in, the, in their growing ages, there is an integrity that they will develop automatically. There is honesty, truth, integrity that they will develop. They will truly understand what they want to become, you know, and the parents can then find uh, uh, better formulas for their happiness than should be formulas that are fed into the brain. Not always getting a good job and good money is going to make people happy. There are a lot of people who are with a lot of sadness, with a lot of money there with them. Similarly, having a family does not always make people happy. All right. So if happiness is the goal, then that be pursued. If happiness is the goal, then that be pursued in integrity, in honesty, with the right kind of customized uh, ways and means that the child has. And to understand what truly he is made up of, what prakriti he is made up of, so analysis. Spiritual study is like analysis of the self, and that would help the parent understand the child better, you know, to be able to guide him into whatever field he is meant to grow. Yeah, instead of um thrusting upon him some should be formulas of happiness and success uh Margaret, have you seen that you know in in your uh while you uh, you were mentoring uh, these ceos and cfos that uh, and those who claim that they were not spiritual by any means that that have you seen that after they have taken up any spiritual practice there has been any kind of uh, change in their outlook their behavior or, uh, or even in the quantum of their success? Uh, I have seen that there are, in fact, a lot of uh, many management programs are already incorporating, uh, you know, subtler therapies and subtler ways. I, I certainly, I'm, uh, I, I'm in certitude of this. I have a conviction that we can have better leaders, you know, we can have better leaders with integrity and uh, more deeper vision for the future if they are spiritually oriented. I certainly believe in this, yeah? And so there are organizations that are working to their level, what is palatable and what is acceptable, uh, you know, uh, on, their, on their board, they would discuss how much, it's not everybody is, is open to experimenting with spiritual programs, but it does make a difference. I've seen a lot of people change. I've seen a lot of people change, yes. One last question before I open the session for question analysis. So uh, how can spirituality help us in dealing with failures and success? Oh, dealing with failures. Failure does, is not a failure. Every failure is a success. I and mean, you ask me, I know I failed innumerable times in my life. You know, I've fallen flat on my, on my face several times. And I know that every failure has been a very strong stepping stone into a level higher. It's a pole wall jumps I have taken every time I have failed. And so, uh, A, Spiritual, spirituality helps you to reconcile with life immediately. It puts you back into your on your feet and get going, dust it out and come on next day, next uh, lesson of life starts. So there is a spirit that one lives in and uh, understands that, uh, uh, you know, all of this is an illusion and all of this is, a, is, a, is in transition all the time. Nothing remains the same. This, what I call failure, is not going to remain a failure tomorrow. It changes into something else. So there's a spirit which is, which is all the time, keep, it keeps you on a move. And uh, um, the normally, uh, in, 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 in normal life, people are very ego-oriented. They're very ego, the personality oriented, ego oriented. A failure is taken very personally, which it is not, a failure is an event. You know, it, it need not be taken so personally as a devastation or as a catastrophe that has finished uh, uh, me completely. It shouldn't be taken like that. It's an event, it's a happening. And if this is happening, life has to go on. So something else will come tomorrow. And you just had to wait and watch as what is being offered to you tomorrow. So it gives you a very deep sense of knowing you know, being spiritual gives you a very deep sense of knowing that life is moving, life is going on, something will come up, you know, so it's not the end of my life, it's not the end of the day, it's not the end of my story, it will go on, you know, and uh, that deep understanding, that deep insight, the deep trust and that deep faith in, in the process of life as such keeps you going, you know, it keeps you going. So failures doesn't matter. Failures are, are uh, uh, you know, events that, 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 that have taught you something, that have matured you, that have pickled you more, that have marinated you more into becoming a better person, for sure. Thank you, Margyan. That was a very, very insightful session, very powerful one.
So uh, now I open this session for question and answer. Uh, the audience today has anything to ask? Yeah, I would like to ask one question, uh, Magya. Like when we say everything is dest destiny is uh, there definitely, but uh, when we have you know there is one uh, point of view which says that when everything is destined, why try? But if that is the case, then what is the purpose of life itself? Yeah. So there, there is there is prarab than purusharth. You know, there's prarab than purusharth. There's destiny and free will. You know, the the creation uh, has happened for the for the sheer joy of the Lord. You know, the creation has happened for the sheer joy of creation. The universe wanted to experience creation and the colors of creation, and the creation was created. The creation is in itself a very self-sustaining uh, system. The sum total of energy in this universe always remains the same. And all the particles or beings that we are go according to a self-monitored cycle. You know, it, it, they all we all move according to self-monitored, self-destined cycles. So the, uh, the free will and the destiny, you know, as it plays in our life, there is a story that we are born with. And there is the response to this story on day-to-day -day basis that we experience you know so today if there is something that is happening to me how i respond to this something that is happening to me creates my tomorrow you know so between tomorrow and today there is this small uh, step of doing you know which definitely affects what's going to happen tomorrow so the tomorrow which is which is which is born has both these ingredients what is carried forward till yesterday and what i did today Okay, so there is this small contribution of free will. However, from a very deeper and a broader and a wider spiritual parlance, even our free will, as I understand it today, even our free will is guided. Even our free will is destined, I feel. It comes within the parameters of destiny. There's a very beautiful video I have posted on my YouTube channel called Karma and Destiny. I would really love you to see that. It gives a diagrammatic explanation. <laughs> Yes, of how uh, your free will is affecting your destiny and how the tomorrow is created. It, it's a science. Science. Okay. Understood, ma. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ji, ji, ji. Namaskar, Jan ma. Namaste. Ma, I want to ask that though my I have lots of respect for the saffron color, sadhu, sannyasi. My mother always say, don't speak any negative about them. Even they don't give you proper attention and all. So my always, whenever I go to some saint or something, I saw that VIPs first, I at the last, I have to, uh, sometime I have, I have to struggle a lot to meet to them, even though don't, they don't give proper attention and all. So that time I feel that why that much of hype I had created for them, why I expected so much that when I will go, they will give answers to my some questions. So ma'am, uh, so ma what is, uh, and some of the spiritual courses also, they create lots of hype that when you will come to my courses, you will get this, your inner peace, stability, everything you are going to get. But when, when we go and when we ask questions, they get irritated. So get, so ma, how do we, I recognize that which place is good for me, where I must go and where I must not go so that instead of creating so much of internal uh, uh, instability, fear, and uh, so much of turmoil that no spiritual guru exists in this world. It's something like, where should I go? Where I will get my answers? Wherever I'm going, I'm finding something. Is it wrong with me? Or is it wrong with them? Most of the time, I keep myself, keep doubting myself, keep judging myself. There is something wrong with you. That's why they have not given proper um, attention to you. So you turn, in, you turn inward and keep in your prayers uh, a deep seeking that I should meet someone who, uh, you know, who I can speak my heart to and who will uh, absolve all these troubles that I'm going through in my mind, number one. Number two, quieten down. Somebody doesn't meet you, you shouldn't bother. You know, quieten down. Become more silent and become more, you know, uh, 
allowance of all that is in the world. The, the world is colorful, you know, the world is colorful. There are all kinds of colors. You have so many dark shades and you have so many beautiful white shades. It's all colorful. So when, when you get confused, understand that the confusion is manifesting outside in the form of no clarity and no access to those, those who you want to meet. There's confusion inside, then there's confusion outside. You silence and you take in your prayers a very sincere, uh, present a very sincere desire to meet someone who is wise and can show me a path and you will certainly find someone you know you have to silence yourself inside we cannot put a generic a general uh, opinion about saffron clad people or about teachers or mentors we can't say that it cannot be generalized everybody is uh, on their own way trying to be as sincere and as good as they as they can you know so we can't make a general comment about everyone yes i can be very sure about this that if you silence yourself and if you sincerely wish that you wish to have a mentor or someone who can guide you and show you the path i'm very sure about it that you will find one yeah yes sir uh, may i yes, ask a question uh, may i ask yes. a question please yes yes nambiar ji uh, you know thank you for a wonderful talk and you know uh, as a bureaucrat, you know, decision spirituality is so important for decision making, as you have mentioned, for success in business. Now, in order for real decision making, much of the decisions are through intuition. And with great depth of spirituality, at least I find that that intuitive decision making becomes very, very marked. So I wanted to ask you about this, it's been in my mind for long. So would yes. you throw some light on this intuition as a decision making, you know? Yes. So when a person is spiritually aligned, when a spiritual, when a person is spiritually aligned, invoked and uh, aware, he, his alignment, uh, you know, the, the soul, brain and the, and the cosmos are in alignment. And the intelligence that is there of the cosmos downloads on his brain, you know, and works as intuition. So his decisions are based on the intelligence of the universe many times. And uh, these download as rit, we call it rit. You know, there is a technical word in Sanskrit, it is called rit. Rit is cosmic intelligence, it downloads. And uh, to a deserving, to a deserving person, that means a person is spiritually awakened, he's mature, and he's sincerely wanting to make a decision, you know, for something very uh, wide and big. The intuition is, is, is shining at that time. And this, this, this sheen on the intuition is that of the cosmos. The cosmos actually, uh, uh, you know, thinks for him. He is able to think and understand what the cosmos is thinking for him. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. I think that's yes. so important. Yes. I think, uh, Magyan, we can also have another session on how to build up this power of intuition with you. But <laughs> now we are running out of time. So I think this is then you would also must be wanting to go to bed because you see. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, Magyan, for coming. Yeah, thank you, thank you all of you. I'm I I I'm in uh, deep respect and deep gratitude to everyone. Thank you so much, Shivi. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.